Hi everybody, and welcome back to In the Kitchen. And I'm doing good, have another sip of wine. Today we are going to make some catfish. Not just any catfish, but buttermilk catfish nuggets. They are to die for. Delicious, delicious, delicious. And when you try them at home, I'm sure you're gonna like them. Okay, you do not have to use catfish because it's buttermilk. You could use any fish that you want. All you have to do is season your catfish or your fish, and then you're gonna dip it into the buttermilk. So, the first thing to do is to get started is have a little wine. Today is the Pinot Noir, Domaine de la Riviere. This is the 2017 Middle Reach Vineyards. So let me start off with some. Let me unloosen the cap. This little cap here is really good. It keeps your wine nice and fresh, and we want this wine to stay fresh, okay? So here we go. There, that will work. Put the cap on. And let's start off with a toast to you. Mmm, so good. Okay, now, first things first. I have my oil heating, which is good, on my little burner, which I love so much. So the next step is, I wanna season my cornmeal, okay? I have a chipotle seasoning. And this is gonna really give it a kick. There we go. Also, a little salt. There we go. This is finely coarse salt. And once again, I don't cook personally with salt, but I'm doing it for you. Then we're gonna have R.L. Schreiber's. It's the salmon fish seasoning. We're gonna add that. That's gonna really kick it up. Okay, and once again, when you're using your seasonings, this chipotle is very fine, but this season here, it, it, you could see the pieces of uh, mixture of seasoning. So what you really wanna do is take it and squeeze it in between your fingers because you want the oils to come out, okay? That's what I'm doing here. I'm squeezing it and that's gonna break everything up. Oh yeah, this smells good and it hasn't even touched the catfish. Okay, let's clean the ham. Okay, so we got that part done. The next step is we want to mix this together really well. So I'm gonna use my hand and you can use yours as well. Mm. This, oh, it smells so good. Smells really good. I think I'll need a little bit more of Shariba seasoning in here. Yeah, and I really thank the gang down in Florida for being such a wonderful sponsor. Okay, we want this season really good. Then I'm going to add a little roasted garlic pepper. Now I'm putting all of this because we're using the um, cornmeal and cornmeal is a little bland and we want to season it really well. Oh boy, woo, this is good. Let me mix this, oh yeah. Now I can see the seasonings inside of the cornmeal. Okay, next step. All right, before, while my oil gets um, a little hot, I was over at Stop and Shop earlier this morning, picking up a few things for the show. And one of the cashiers, a good friend of mine, her name is Lori, <clears throat> told me about purple sweet potatoes. And I told her, I says, I've never had purple sweet potatoes. She said, Renee, 
They are so good, so I had to pick up a couple. I'll show you one. Here it is. This is Frida's Strokes Purple Sweet Potato. You cook it the same way, she said. Wash it, wrap aluminum foil around it, or you can season the outside. Wrap aluminum foil around it. I would give it just a, a brush of olive oil. Put it in the oven and cook it for, bake it I should say, for at least an hour until it's soft. She said the taste is unbelievable. Lori, I'm going by what you say, and I'm going to try it. Normally, I use the regular sweet potato. This is the regular sweet potato. This was I use most of the time. Okay, I understand that sweet potato, there are many different types of sweet potatoes. I think about five different um, types, as you see the purple, and some sweet potatoes, I think when I was small, when you cut it in the inside, it wasn't that orange color, it was white. And I believe my grandmother said, that is sweet potato, okay? So, <clears throat> let's leave that there. <clears throat> Excuse me, clean my hands, have another little sip. Mmm, so good. While my oil continues to get hot, I'm really thankful to be able to share this with QB uh, TV and for you to be able to tune in every Saturday from 12.30 to 1.30 and on Wednesdays, 5 until 6 p.m. In the future, I will have a few guest chefs from Hudson Community College of Culinary Arts, Chef O'Malley, Chef O'Malley, everybody loves Chef O'Malley. The same with Chef Kazam and Chef Claude, in addition to Chef Webb. Miss Webb, she teaches us table service, how to set up the table, how to um, just, uh, set your napkins on the table. There's the cardinal, there's all different types. One is a rose, and when you take your pic picture, if you go into a table, when you take to pitch it to the table on a little tray, you see like a little rose at the bottom of the water pitcher. Really nice, really cute. Um, also, how to place the forks on the table, the wine glass, the water glass. If you're interested, why don't you go and sign up um, at Hudson Community College for Culinary Arts? For those who do not know, to register for community colleges, and it's not every community college, but Hudson, you can go there for free. Yes, for free. If you make less than $42,000 a year, all you have to do is sign up, your books are included, your chef uh, uniform is included, and that beautiful set of knives. You get a knife set worth about $250. Has everything in it that you need for your class. Go there, take the culinary class. It is well worth it. When you walk in the class like I did, I was so amazed. I had on all white, I had on that chef hat, and I had my knives in my hand. <clears throat> and when I walked in that room, it was like a whole nother world. Yes, I've been cooking for most of my life, but when I went in there, I act like I never cooked before. All the things that I did here and wherever I lived, I left it on the outside the door and act like a new student. You know what I'm saying? So please go to hcc.edu and you'll be able to sign up for classes. And later on, I'll tell you about the soul food class that I'm gonna be teaching at the college, extended education. <coughs> Excuse me. Oop, what did I do? Woo, <laughs> okay. Now we're ready for the catfish. Like I said, I have my buttermilk here. We already seasoned the um, cornmeal. Here's one piece. I'm going to dip it in the buttermilk, let the excess drip off, add it to my cornmeal. Now, you can also take the fish, put it in the bag with the buttermilk, Leave it in the refrigerator. You can do that for overnight if you like. That's up to you or for an hour so everything will get into it, okay? So here we go. Really, really nice. And while I was talking, I can smell this. It smells really good. 
Oh yeah, that's good. Let's do another piece. So how's everybody doing since the last time I spoke to you, which was last week? Anything new happening? I hope so. Um, for me, everything is good. Um, I have one more week of school. I graduated, as you know, from Hutchinson Community College of Culinary Arts. And now I'm graduating from Bailey Dickinson University with a bachelor's degree in international hospitality and tourism. Oh yeah, look at that, that looks good. Let's do another piece. We're going to dip, da 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 da. Oh yeah. Ooh, I can smell this. This is really going to be fabulous. Now, you want to cook the catfish for about two to three minutes on each side. It will end up turning brown. You can cook it to the consistency that you like, but I suggest about two or three minutes and you'll be just fine, okay? Um, let's do, let's mix this up a little. I have another piece. I'm going to add that to the mix, okay? Yeah, there we go. There it is. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got some more. Hold on, let me get a little sip. Mmm. Wow. Mala, this Pinot Noir, this is the best. Yes, okay. Let's add another little piece. Mmm. Here we go. Do this. Let's tap it, add it to our pan. I think I can put one more piece. Remember, um, not just with fish, but whatever you're cooking, try not to crowd the pan, okay? Sometimes, and I've done it, um, cooking chicken, and you put all that chicken in the pan, and then it sticks together. And I think at one time I thought that was really fun. I said, oh, look at my chicken, it's cooking. It's all stuck together. Hey, I like this, okay. You know how, you know, you know where I'm going. You know what I'm talking about. Here's another piece. Okay. I could fit one more <clears throat> in the center. There we go. Oh boy. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, that looks good. Let me just rinse my hand. Bye bye, I'm back. Okay, we're doing good. Now, the next thing, or I should say, the next part of this, I will be doing some eggplant. Not just taking the eggplant and putting it in the oven like eggplant parmesan. I'm taking them and making them into little round pieces and it will be topped with a slice of mushroom that has been sauteed or you can just take the mushroom and put it on top. Then I'm gonna add some cheese on top of that. Then a thin slice of tomato. I mean, it just goes on and on and it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Let me tell you, you will love it, especially those who are vegans. You're going to love it. it I mean, the, the taste is right there for you, okay? So I have my eggplant. And you know when you purchase an eggplant, it should be heavy and weight. If it is, you know you have a good piece of eggplant, okay? Let's see how I need my other, one sec. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I think what I should do is turn this, yeah, there we go. Okay, this is looking good. Now, what I wanted to tell you before, um, at Hudson Community College for their culinary arts on January the 18th, I will be teaching a soul food class. 
This class will consist of making cornbread from scratch. There are several different types of cornbread. Um, if someone like yourself in the class and you like a little spice to it, what I do, I chop up real fine some jalapeno pepper and you add that to the mix. When you slice your cornbread, you'll see the little green pieces and trust me, it's not really, really hot. When I first started doing it, I thought it was too much jalapeno pepper and I didn't really get that kick just a little bit, you know? So it'll be cornbread from scratch, which is good. Then we will be doing baked chicken, not just a baked chicken, but baked barbecue chicken. The barbecue sauce, I will teach you how to make your own barbecue sauce. So when you're at home and you say, I want some barbecue ribs, I want barbecue this, I want barbecue that, you don't have to run to the store and buy a bottle. All you have to do is make your own. And it is very easy. Making barbecue sauce is not hard. You need your onion, you need a couple of other seasons in which we'll go through. You put it on the stove, you let it boil for about maybe a half an hour, and you'll see it started bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. You've probably seen um, the little video I put up when I was making it. So good. Put that on the chicken and let it go into the oven. Okay, what else we're going to be making? Baked macaroni and cheese from scratch, of course, with not two cheeses, three cheeses, but probably four cheeses. I think you're going to love this. I really do. Baked macaroni and cheese. It is to what? To die for and, and the best, as my best friend Deborah says, okay? So then we're gonna have a veggie, and the veggie is gonna be string beans and potatoes. Um, I don't eat pork. A lot of people these days, they don't eat pork. What I used to do many years ago, I would take a piece of um, ham hock and put that in the water and let that ham hock start to cook. Then I would add diced up, uh, not tomatoes, diced up potatoes and put that in there. So when the potatoes are cooking, it's absorbing them. And then at the end, I would put some string beans in there and just cover that and let it cook. And let me tell you, that would, the, the flavor would season the, the string beans and season the potatoes. It was the best. I mean, really, really good. It was almost like a meal in itself. Okay, our fish is doing really good. Um, next, when this episode is finished, I will be doing eggplant and also shrimp if we have enough time. I will be making some shrimp where I fantail the end of the shrimp. I batter that and I take that and I fry it and that's gonna go with this whole entire dish that we're working on today. Okay, let me take a look. Oh yeah. Now, what you can do while you are, when you finish working on your, um, your, your fish, you can put it on a tray and then finish it in the oven, okay? That will work as well. This, um, should be a little higher. The heat on here should be a little higher, but that's okay. Because all I have to do is just put it in the oven and uh, it will get nice and brown and it'll be really, really cooked. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this looks good. Once again, we have our catfish. I have my buttermilk. I have my cornmeal. I season with a chipotle um, pepper, a little bit of salt. I also use the salmon fish seasoning from R.L. Schreiber, my sponsor. Also, I use the roasted garlic pepper, also from R.L. Schreiber. You'll see more on them. And in the meantime, I also have to have, you know I have to have my wine every week. Here we go. And I think that's it for right now. So 
When I come back, we will start working on either the shrimp or we will do uh, the eggplant while this is being finished in the oven, okay? I will see you in a few minutes. Until then, just stay right where you are, okay? Bye. Here we are with our completed dish of fried catfish. Not just fried catfish, but buttermilk fried catfish. A beautiful, beautiful plate. I hope you try this. You and I did this today, and I'm sure that your family would love it as well. Fried buttermilk catfish. On this segment, we are going to fry some shrimp. I was watching a program, and I always watch food programs. Uh, people doing this with the food, doing that, and just learning new tips and new tricks when it comes to cooking. This part isn't necessarily a new way of frying shrimp, but some of you might not know how to do it like this, and at one point I didn't either. So what I'm going to do, I have some shrimp here. They are a good size. This is a good size. And I'm going to fan tail it. So you'll have the tail, but the top part will be opened up a little and it'll be flat, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have here a regular Ziploc bag. And what I'm going to do is open it up and make it one large piece. Move that out the way. I'm gonna go like this. Let me see if I can get this piece off. There we go. That's done. So here's the bag. Take my knife. And if it'll work, oh, there it is. And I'm gonna split this size Turn it over. I'm gonna split this side. Now we have one whole piece. The next step, I can smell my pan. This is put the shrimp in, put the shrimp in. The next step, I'm gonna take a piece of shrimp, maybe a few pieces, and put it on like this, and put this, trying to make them all face the same way. And another here. And another here. Then you're gonna take the other half and cover it over like this. And I'm using a mallet, but you could use the end of a jar, whatever is good for you. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold it and I'm just gonna tap it very lightly. You don't want to smash the whole shrimp. Another piece. You can see it's moving around, you know. And another piece. As simple as that, okay? I'm gonna open this up. And there you have it. Just the ends have been flattened a little bit. Okay, hold on. Let me have my sip of wine. Oh yeah. All right, now, the next step is to season this. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna take my shrimp, put it in this bowl, Okay, I have four pieces in there. Maybe I should add some more for you, so you could have some. Okay, here I go. Put one, two, let me see. This one, it's not gonna work. Three, and four. Here I go again. I'm gonna cover it. Now, some of you might think why don't I just take the seasoning and put it on here and then do the banging. What will happen, um, the seasoning is gonna be all over the place 
And if you have a hard season, it might just mess up and tear up your bag. Remember, I'm not banging on this shrimp very hard, just lightly. Hold the shrimp. Tap. Hold the shrimp. Oop. Tap. Sometime it works for you. Sometime the shrimp say, no, not me, not me. Here you go. Another one. And another one, lightly tapped. Now, you could use any size shrimp that you like. Um, if you use the large shrimp, it's probably even better for you because then you get a whole nice piece of shrimp. Take a little longer for you to cook, but it will do the same thing, okay? Take this, put it in here. There we go. So we have eight pieces of shrimp. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do some more. Let me do this. I have the Schreiber fish seasoning. There, there we go. Oh, I could smell this, it's gonna be so good. Yeah. And then I have a pinch of salt. Oh boy. A little chipotle seasoning. That is gonna give it a little kick. You know what I mean? There we go. Another type of chipotle, because we like it spicy. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it all up. Oh, this smells good. Wow. Oh, yeah. Actually, I should put um, a little cayenne pepper. That'll, that'll bring it up. Let me get some cayenne pepper. I'm back. A little cayenne pepper. That will do it, right? Here we go. It almost have that Cajun um, hotness to it. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Take that and add it to my pan. Woo! Let me tell you, it smells so freaking good. Mmm. Oh, I wish you had smell of food or smell of vision because this is sensational. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm not giving you none because it's all for me. No, I'm just joking. You can always have some. Okay, wow. Okay, while well, that's doing, oh, I have my tray here. Okay, well, we know that the shrimp doesn't take long to cook. Oh, wow. Do you hear it sizzling? Oh my goodness, so good, so good. Okay, so while the shrimp is doing its thing, um, next we are going to have the eggplant. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna take the eggplant and I'm gonna cut it in slices like this, preferably about an inch thick. I did a test with it and I had the eggplant about a half an inch and it cooked real fast. So this time around, I'm going to have the eggplant, right here it's approximately one inch, I'm gonna have the eggplant cooked, I mean sliced in inch pieces, okay? 
and that's not going to take long to bake in the oven with the, um, the cheese on top, the slice of um, tomato, I'm almost forgetting, slice of tomato, and then sprinkle with parsley, etc. when it comes out of the oven. Okay, let's take a look. Oh yeah, I can turn this back up a little. This shrimp is gonna be so good. You can smell the spices. There was at one time, I could not cook shrimp to save my life. I mean, I would cook it, it would be, uh, how could I say, tough. And then um, my best friend, Deborah, who was actually right around the corner here, uh, she came by and then she showed me how to cook it. And ever since then, it seems to be working. You know, sometimes it could be like a hit or a miss. And when you're in culinary school, yes, you learn how to cook shrimp. You learn how to cook lobster. You take the lobsters, of course, a live lobster, and you learn how to poke it and da da da. I did not have to do that because another guy in the class did it, and it was so funny because the chef said, "Oh, so and so, I want you to take that lobster, and I want you to, you know, jab the knife." And he stepped back. He said, "No, no, no, I can't do that to a lobster. I can't do that." And I'm standing there laughing. I said, come on, it ain't nothing. He said, well, Renee, why don't you do it? I said, he didn't ask me to do it. I'm looking at the chef. I hope he doesn't say, Renee, since you got a big mouth, you go on and then you do it. I would have said, oh, um, I have to go to the men's room. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's a little story. Culinary school is funny. Okay. Oh, wow. Woo. Oh, you could smell the seasoning from this. Oh. oh my goodness. R.L. Schreiber, this company, um, my contact, Robert, thank you very much. This seasoning is really, really good. I am very proud to have you as a sponsor. Okay, this is looking good. In the meantime, we're going to cook another batch. So let me do this. This is my draining pan, rinse my ham. Here we go again. We're gonna take one piece and we're gonna take another. We're gonna take another. Let me turn this up a pinch. And we're gonna take another piece and we're gonna close this. Isn't this a cute way of doing it? I saw this and I said, I need to try it. Oh, you popping? You okay in there? Okay. I give that 30 seconds more. Take my mallet. Make sure that you hold a piece of shrimp because it's going to move all around. Oop. Just popping all over the place. Okay. Another piece. Another piece. Another piece. Okay. Let me get my pan, my shrimp all done. One, two, three, four, five, oops, six. Look at that. Okay. I have two pieces that I season with the first batch. Okay. We're gonna take this, add it to the bowl, which has a little seasoning in it. Now I know plenty of people out there, you have all different kind of ways of doing it. There is no wrong way. It's whatever suits you and your family and the way that you would like your shrimp cooked, okay? We have all our seasonings here. Woo! Just a pinch of salt. And R.L. Schreiber, coming right up. There we go. Bam, okay. I'm gonna take this, mix it all around. Now, you can do this ahead of time, season your shrimp, and then go back 
and fry it. That's left up to you. I think it needs a little bit more. Here, a little salt. Let's get this party started. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, you know what? It's so much fun to cook. And at the end of the evening, you see your wonderful results when you set the table and you serve and your family or friends say, oh my goodness, this is so good. Oh, I enjoyed this. How did you make it? And then you tell them, you know what? I can't tell you my recipe. You know the rest of that story. Mm -hmm. I would have to do what if I told you my recipe? No, but here in this kitchen, it's not like that because I don't mind sharing my recipe with you. Um, I don't mind sharing, I don't mind sharing my recipe with you. That's why I have this show, okay? And if you have a recipe that you think I would like, you'll be able to send it to me, to my website, not Renee Hewitt, I was gonna say that. It's chefrenehewitt.com. You'll be able to, you know, see what's going on. All the shows will be posted there, and then the email address will be there so you can send me your recipe. I will try it out. If I like it and my testers like it, I will bring you on the show, and I think that you would love that, okay? Now, oh my goodness. Now we put these other two pieces in. We're gonna let those cook down. Ooh, my goodness. I wish you was here. The smell, the scent of this, the aroma that's coming up in this apartment. You would be living next door saying, oh my goodness, Renee over there cooking. I said, come on in, come on in. Yeah, give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. Now don't forget, I mentioned it in the previous segment, um, I will be teaching at Hudson Community College. Now this is the ex extended education. This is not the regular culinary classes, this is the extended education. And on my website or on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you'll see all that information and that will help you to be able to register for the class. They have other classes as well. Um, Chef Kazam teaches classes there. He is one of the chefs that taught me um, how to fix and how to, you know, how to, how to cook. Put it like that, actually how to cook. Okay, let's get these other two pieces. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. Look at this. And look, you have the tips just to hold on to. The tails, I should say. Okay. Ooh, this is the best. Oh, yeah. Deborah, shrimp is on. <laughs> she can't hear me. I'm just goofing around. I just love to have, you know, it's the, the best thing in life is to have fun. If you can make people laugh, and they laugh and laugh and laugh. It's good, laughter is good for the soul. It is really good for you. So if you can make someone laugh or smile, you never can tell they might be having a bad day. And then you come along and say some silly joke and they laugh and they might walk away and say, you know what, I needed that. Um, here at home I have friends come by and Deborah when I don't remember what we were talking about, but she had me laughing so hard that my back was hurting. I had to go in the bathroom and tell her, stop, stop, I can't take it no more. And I guess because I was laughing and she's a female, she was going hee hee hee, and that made me laugh. So you see what, I'm, see what I'm saying, you see where I'm coming from? It's all good, you know, wake up in the morning, you know, make your partner laugh, go to work and make your coworkers, you know, put a smile on their face. They might say, what got into you? Why are you so happy? because I'm happy I'm here today, and I'm feeling good, and I wanna share it with you, right? Isn't that the way you do it? Yes. Okay, 
Let me have a sip of wine. And I'm ho I hope I'm putting a smile on your face. Okay. Here we go. Oh, it's popping all over the place. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I really wish you could smell this. Look at these. Perfect, nicely seasoned. Um, sometimes I bread them, sometimes I don't. This is just as good, okay? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let that cook a couple of more seconds and then I will be back to you. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. You like that? You want some? Okay. That was good. That was really good. Once again, I have my shrimp. I bought maybe 21 to a bag, or the ticket might have been a little bit more to the pound. And I have my R.L. Schreiber seasoning, okay? This is the salmon and fish seasoning, which is here. Then I had a two different types of chipotle seasoning, and then I added salt, as I say over and over. Personally, I don't cook with salt, but I do it, you know, when I'm doing the show just so you know how much to use. Um, there is a difference between picking up how much salt. There is the two finger process, which you use two fingers to pick up the salt. You'll get only X amount. Then you have the three finger, meaning you'll get more salt. See, see the difference? Two finger, three finger. Then you have four finger. So when you grab the salt, you're grabbing, look at that. You're grabbing a lot of salt. And then after that, you would put the salt in the palm of your hands and then you would put it on your, on your food. So once again, you have the two finger, you get X amount of salt. You have the three finger, you get more salt. You have the four finger, you even get more. And remember, when we season, we season from above. So it looks like it is snowing salt. <laughs> okay, so there it is. I'll have another sip. You know I love to have my wine. And until next time, enjoy. Welcome back. Part three. Mmm. We are going to make some eggplant. I'm gonna cut them in little discs and then we're going to start stacking them. Okay? Now, I think I mentioned before, when you buy eggplant, they should have some weight to it, which is really good. That's what you want, eggplant that has a little weight. All right, so. I'm going to just cut off my, just the tip part, which I really don't need. And now I did this before and the eggplant, I slice it maybe a half an inch. After it goes into the oven, I discovered during my test that the eggplant cooked faster than I thought. So I'm going to give it a nice, nice piece as such. Okay. Let's do another one. You see? Nice. Trying to make them uniform. Why? Because if you cut, say for instance, um, onions and green peppers, if you cut them all the same size, they cook evenly. Right? You know that. Okay. Another piece. Okay. And another piece. And of course, as you get to the end, they get smaller. And I will take care of that. Okay. Here we go. We have five nice pieces. Now, the next step, I have these like this. Um, 
I'm going to add tomato and I'm also going to add some mozzarella cheese on this, okay? However, let's bring over our pan. And what I want to do is just a little bit of olive oil on the pan. Okay, let's put this here. One sec. I have my handy brush and I'm going to do this all over the pan. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my eggplant and I'm going to place them on the sheet. Okay, we have five, so I'm going to do this. Okay. Now we need just a pinch of salt on each. Yeah, let's do that side. It really doesn't matter what side that you use. Okay. Now that we did that, I want to add some pepper, R.L. Shriver's roasted pepper and garlic, put some in my hand. Do this. Squeeze, squeeze through the fingers. Yeah, on each. Very good. Uh, okay. Watch and see how simple this dish is. It is as simple as simple could be. Okay, now I took care of this. Now I took care of this part. I'm going to add tomato. So let me move this out the way. I have five pieces, so I'm gonna use five pieces of tomato. Let me, let me do this. Oh, the juice is coming out of this tomato. This is really good. Yeah. There we go. Woo! Wow, this is a good tomato. Yeah. And we have a small piece of um, eggplant, so that will get the end. Okay. There we go. There is a tomato. I'm gonna take these slices and I'm adding it to the top of each piece of eggplant. Oh my goodness. You see where I'm going with this? There we go. Look at that. That's what we want. This is a little extra piece. Let me just clear off my board. Give me a sec. There we go. Oh boy, I'm dealing with a little um, sinus, so just bear with me. Okay, clean this off. All right, now that we have that part done and I wash my board and I rinse my hands, I'm going to take some of the mozzarella cheese. Nice, nice. And I'm going to just cut a piece like that. And we need five pieces to come out of this. Oh, yeah. Two. I'm trying to be careful as I cut it. I don't want to uh, mess it up. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Here are the five pieces. And here are 
what? Our eggplant and the slices of tomato that we use, okay? Let's do this. So we'll be ready for stacking. All right, now, next I'm going to take each piece of the mozzarella cheese and put on top. Oh yeah, this is good for people who are vegans. They will love this. This piece, I give you this and this. A little extra piece. Oh boy, that looks good. Looking good, that's what I want. All right, I'm going to add a little spice to it. This is some Cajun, but you don't have to use that. You can use organic. Then I'm going to use the roasted garlic pepper. Take this. Ooh, this looks so good. Oh, you folks are going to love this. This is a great, nice appetizer for your loved one. You say, oh, I got something for you, honey. Goes, what is it? You pull out this. He's going to, or she's going to say, no way, you did not do that. <laughs> okay, now, what I did do, uh, let me get a fork. I sauteed some portobello mushrooms, but I did purchase, or I could slice them myself, or yourself. I got the nice large pieces, and they are going to lay on top. Now, I sauteed them a little because, you know, mushrooms take a while to cook. So that's why I did it like this. But this one, look how this is stacking up. And a little piece goes for you. Okay. How does that look so far? That looks good, right? Okay. Real simple. Not a lot of work. I think I'm making this in, in 10 minutes. Let me have a little sip of wine. Mmm. Very good. Okay. There we go. Now, oh, now we're just about ready to put this into the oven at 350 degrees and let the cheese melt and that will finish cook the mushroom. When it comes out of the oven, you're going to add, well, in this case, I added some pickled jalapeno peppers and they're not hot. Actually, you can add them. I'll add a couple of pieces now, like such. Here we go. This is just gonna give it a little kick. It's nothing major. Okay, I'm gonna do this. And then, when it comes out, you can take either some parsley or cilantro and cut it up real fine, real fine. And then you're gonna sprinkle it on top and also some green onion. You can take the green onion cut the tip off, of course, and then chop this and put it on top. Now, before this goes into my oven at 350 degrees, I want to put some oil on top and I'm going to use um, avocado oil. So what I'm going to do is just drip right on top, right on top, just a little bit. You remember that song? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. This is going to bring a little moisture to these um, eggplant. Okay, just like this. And look how easy this is. This is really, really, really simple. 10 minutes, you're able to create this, okay? I'm gonna put it in my oven, 350 degrees, until you see the eggplant started to wilt a little and the cheese start to melt and your dish is ready, okay? 
Until next time. Have a wonderful day or evening. Bye.